Okay, g'day guys, Andrew Dwight here. Look, uh, this is more of a, a US, uh, this is an imperial wall that I've done here. And uh, we're creatures of habit. We like to use walls over and over and over again. So we can save these walls as, as uh, in our default template. So we can go File, Save as Template. And we might have five or six different walls that we might like to use. So let's just say, for instance, we're going to use this wall as a, a wall that we use over and over. So I've changed the settings of this wall. So basically, I've made it so it suits a one and two slope with a 24 inch overhang. And I've also got a four inch step down for my brickwork. And I might like to use six inch studs over and over. So that's what I have inside of this wall. And I can use this wall, walls, uh, create similar wall. And I can go ahead and all the settings are set in there for me. So, you know, it's a nine foot wall, uh, but I can change that to whatever it might be. Uh, and I can change the height of my windows. It's really important to get this right at the start. And I can go through, I can change my timbers if I chose. But the main thing is I might have the right materials that I want to use on there. As you can see, I've got a 10 by 2 stud there and, and two top plates by default. And I can just go in here and I can just start to draw walls. Okay, nothing too flashy here. Okay, and it's copied uh, my default wall, which I've set up in my default template. Yet, I understand that you might want to use several different types of, of walls. So I could just go up to my wall tool here and I could go into here and say well I also use regularly an external clad wall and I might want to use uh, 4 by 2 or 2 by 4 studs and I might want to have uh, a 24 or 16 on center stud spacing uh, that can all be changed later reasonably easily and I might want to say well I want to change the materials so I can go through and search my materials and, and have a bit of look at the type of material that I want to choose I'm going to stick with the timber material at the moment or wood now uh, we might want a DuPont wrap, uh, we might want an insulation as well. And we might even need a termite barrier. Now I could go in here and I can quickly just put a wall in here. And now I have a wall that has all of those materials that are provided there. But I might also want to make sure that I have a step down similar to here. And so I can select that wall, I can either right click and edit wall, walls, edit wall, and I can do say a, a step down or a drop off the top of that wall so I might say okay well I want it to be say a one foot step down uh, actually probably make it four inch step down for my concrete I'm sorry and I might want to have a one foot step down and I might even want a cavity in there as well okay and I can go submit and you'll notice that it changed the way that that wall is done if I went to file save as template I could now go back I'll do it now and I call it USA go save yep okay if I go and open up SketchUp again I'm going to open a new file now you'll notice that I now have these two walls in as default and I can continue to create 30 different types of walls and I could label them up if I wanted to and said well instead of this being wall number whatever it is I might say well this is a, a clad wall with nine foot whatever okay <clears throat> and then if I save it as a default this will always come out uh, so now I can go through and I can say right click walls create similar wall and if I wanted to change my heights and so on I go submit and I can now create whatever it is I choose with my default walls it's a good way to stop having to create the same wall over and over again once I've created my wall here, I can say, okay, well, I want to put a roof on here, or I want to put concrete in there, or whatever it might be, uh, on my internal walls, and I can work from pre-existing setups. Uh, it's a good way to keep your cost down low, so you're always drawing with maybe a cheaper product, or uh, it's a good way to work with Plusbeck to make things quicker. Being creatures of habit, it's a, it's a really handy thing to be to know this kind of stuff so let's have a look now this one here has been set up with a one in two roof pitch and I'm just not getting into too much design here the Taj Mahal it is not but this drop down suits a one in two pitch at 24 inch overhang so if I said right click walls and I'm going to generate roof from walls I'll just make sure that I'm on a one in two which I am there 
adjustment ratio. I can choose the type of material that I want to put on there, uh, my fascia heights and so on, and I can just go submit. Give it a second. And now when I go and do a section cut through this wall, or the whole lot here, You'll see, I actually didn't quite get it right. I've obviously increased my overhang there, so I didn't check the overhang when I did it. Uh, and I might want to set it up. So the best way that I could do this would say, well, really what I wanted to do is know the distance from here to here. I'm just using a line tool. I can now dimension that distance. Okay. And I can copy and paste this information back into the wall. So if I went back, I'll turn my section off there. If I went back to these walls, right click walls and select my connected walls, I can now go in and I can go oops, walls, select connected walls, and I can go and right click or I can go back up to here and I can change the step down to suit the overhang on this particular roof. Okay, so I'm just going here and go control V. And now when I go submit. Okay, let's have a look at the section now. Right, you can see that's a bit better, that's what I was after. When I remove that section through my walls here, I can also add hatching according to that particular wall type. And a lot of this will happen automatically or you can change the type of hatching. Go submit. And I just turn my section planes off there. And you'll see that it hatched the wall. If I put a window in here, it will also cut my hatching for me as well. So, say I'll turn this off here, you can see there's my section cut there. Go submit. Right, and if I went to back to turn my section on, I can now go and select the section and move it, and it will update my section hatch. So let's uh, make this an active section active cut. Right, and as I move that section further my sections are, are updating automatically which is really helpful. Uh, obviously if I put in a concrete slab I click walls, generate, floor face from walls and I went to my concrete and said I want a four inch step down. It says uh, depth is four inch, go submit. And if I move my section hatching, or my section cut again, you'll notice it'll hatch that for me. Okay. So now you see I have a concrete texture in my section, which is really handy. You're getting a lot done in a very short amount of time. If I wanted to create this into a 2D drawing so I can use it in layout, or I might want to export as a DWG, click this button here. And what it's done is it's gone through and it's created a whole heap of plans for me. So if I went to my elevations, you'll see I have my walls in there that I had in originally. I can delete them at this stage because I might be happy with what I've got. Go back to my elevation. It's centered my elevation for me. If I go to my other sides, I can now go through and start to detail up my plan according to you know, the client's requests or solar aspect or whatever it might well be. Right. We can very, very quickly get a whole heap of information out of these plans. I can add in trusses or I can add in rafters, so stick timber rafters inside of here. And if you need to watch this back again, I can choose the spacings, my fascia heights, my eaves, the feet, the type of timber that I want to use in there. And I can go submit. And what it's doing is populating this roof with rafters. There is something that you need to know though. Let's have a look at what we did there. We did a whole heap of work very, very quickly there. Yet yeah, there's certain instances where there could be, you know, different variations. So for instance, you can see that I'm not 24 inches on center here. You know, and the reason why that is is that I might say, well, it might be better to have a, a thing called a crowned end rafter, which goes to the center here. So if I use, say, my tape measure tool, I can align my overhang. And I might say, well, 24 inches off center. Try and get it on the green axes here. Struggling a little bit there. Let's have a look. Right, green axes, and I said right in 24 inches. <coughs> Terrible example. 24 inches. Ah, my number pad's on. Number locks off. Sorry. 24. You can see down the bottom right-hand corner where I'm writing in. 24 inches. Enter, and now I have the location of that last timber. 
there's two things I could do if I had a rafter next to it obviously if I move this one over it's going to be too short I can also go in and I can create my own rafters alternatives and rafter from points and I go to here it will automatically uh, remember the pitch according to how I draw it and my intersection line is there and now I have that extra rafter in. In certain other cases, see if I can find another case here, I can simply just go and move another rafter so I've still got 24 on center. Let's have a look here. So I'm going to select this rafter here and really all I need to do is move this rafter. I pushed control when I did that so I've sort of created a, an array and I can just double check and see whether my rafter is long enough. Uh, and you can see it's a touch short there. You can always go back and go draw rafter from points as well. So very, very quickly we're getting a bill of quantities. Here's a good example here. I can move that rafter. So push control once. 24 inches. Enter. And now I have a detailed rafter layout. And you can see I need another one there. There's a couple more that I can do. The most important thing out of this is once I've completed my check, I can do a bill of quantity. So if I hid my slab, I could just do a bit of quantities just on the rafters that are set out here. Okay, so reframing, and you see that I have all of my rafters there, and according to the size, my hips are, are two by six, and my rafters are two by four. Okay, and that's given me a full list of quantities, and I've also associated a price with that, and I'll show you how I did that. So if I click on this roof here, let's close that down, and I go to my dollar sign, I can go and put in a price for my lumber. So I can set a price for my 2x6 and it might be, I don't know, per foot, it might be $1.20. And even an install price, if you want to get down into the installing of this, I might, I might say, well, the, the frame and carpenter costs, I don't know, 50 cents a metre. I'm just taking a guess here. Set a price for my 2x4 lumber, it's already in there. As soon as I click Save and Update Price List, it's saying it's saving to my hard disk. So next time I use that particular size lumber, I will now have a price. When I do a bill of quantities, let's have a look. <coughs> Roof framing. 2x6 is $1.20 and 50 cents a, a lineal feet to install it. I'm now getting a populated bill of quantities very, very quickly. Uh, and that's a very powerful tool. It also allows us to explain to our carpenters how we want them to go about doing things. We can put in ceiling joists, we can put in everything that's required to do this, even say our e-framing and so on. And if we look through this model, you'll notice that everything's populated behind the scenes. If I went in and said, uh, I'm going to edit and I'm going to unhide last, which is my concrete slab, <coughs> I can go in and start to put in footings. So I can go into here and go to here and choose the size of the footing that might be on the engineer's detail. Okay. 15 by 15, whatever it might be, and I can put in footings, whether it be below face or above face, uh, and you can see I didn't put that one in very well, or I could continue just to draw around, and it will follow my mouse around, let's turn off clear view here so you might get a bit better understanding, and we might say, I don't know, we've got a footing in some strange locations, and double click it, and everything is being quantified as I've done it, so now if I went back and did a bit of quantities, I'm going to get everything that I'm looking at inside of my model. So I'm going to get brickwork, I'm going to get insulation, I'm going to get a window. <clears throat> There's the one window that I put in there. There must be two in there somewhere, I'll have a look. Uh, and I also have uh, my concrete slab. And you'll notice that I have cubic feet. I understand this is going to be cubic yards and that will be updated in the next version of Plusbeck. Oh, there you go. There's our two windows. Okay, so very, very quickly we're getting something we can build from. And very, very quickly uh, we're getting... Uh, a bill of quantities, uh, therefore we can communicate with, with our trades, we can communicate with uh, everyone required on the job. And ceiling joists is obviously another thing, under purlins, uh, everything that's required to build this house uh, is available inside of these dialogues. So I can go to floor joists there if I was going to go say a second story or if I wanted to go into my ceiling joists, I can now go and select the size of my ceiling joists. Uh, and I can, uh, do I want to include a floor on top of my ceiling joist? Do I want to include a ceiling? Is it going to be below face or above the face? Is it existing or is it going to be demolished? If I clicked existing, it will not quantify it. If I clicked demolish, it would actually tell us the amount of meters of timber that we're going to throw in the bin. And I can choose my, uh, 
my ceiling joist size go submit and obviously this is a quick one we can cut through these things here you can see that I I have uh, my uh, stringers there and we're gonna have to move them around if I went to say an unhid all edit unhide all you'll see that I have my stringers coming through uh, the top of my ceiling there we can edit them and if we went to structure we can see well I might want to change the location and I might want to get rid of a few of these ceiling joists so I'll delete this one here and I can cut the top of my stringer so to here and it's still going to give me the quantity to here okay so you see if I go back to all now I've cut that one out obviously I don't want this one here it's too close delete it and I will now have a bill of quantities according to where I'm at now with my job and it's very very powerful and very very efficient I hope it helps out guys so the main point was to show you that we could use templates to redraw walls but I just thought I'd get into a couple of other things all right I'll hope that helps out cheers uh, www.pluspec.com is where you'll find more information on this cheers